All right. Welcome to Redeemer United Church of Christ on this lovely spring morning, sunny day. And we are located in Sussex, Wisconsin. I am Linda Grabner Smith, and I'm the liturgist for today. We will begin this morning with sharing some announcements. There are many, many wonderful things to sign up for outside of, of the uh, sanctuary in the big hall. But uh, there are several opportunities to volunteer for worship and Holy Week. Some examples are soup for Monday, Thursday, set up for Good Friday, and decorating Easter eggs for Easter. Please see the sign-up sheets in the Great Hall or check your Redeemer reminders to sign up. On Wednesday, March 23rd at noon, behind the fireplace. Competition here. Father we have a peanut gallery, don't we? Okay. On Wednesday, March 23rd at noon, behind the fireplace, Redeemer will be viewing the UCC webinar, Restoring Nature, What People of Faith Can Do to Heal the Earth, with speaker Douglas Talami. Please sign up online or on the sign up in the Great Hall. Thank you. And you are also invited to make contributions through the United Church of Christ for the UCC Ukraine Relief Fund. A link is provided in the Redeemer Reminders, and it was also shared on the Redeemer Facebook page. If you decide to make a donation, please share with the church office the amount so we can publish a collective number that Redeemer members have contributed. If you are joining us for the first time, we hope that you find a warm and friendly welcome from the people of Redeemer. And if you are joining us online, please take a minute to fill out our virtual Who's Where in the Chair survey located in the Zoom chat or on the Facebook comments section. To do this, simply copy and paste the link from that chat box into your internet browser and complete the questions. And this will help us to connect with those of you who are joining us virtually today. Redeemer is a church spiritually alive and growing, radically inclusive and engaged in our communities. And we are a church learning to love more. Our pastor is the Reverend Julie Eklund. Today we celebrate the second Sunday in Lent, and our welcoming music today is provided by Dan Stolper and Mary Dobierla.
call to worship. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, come to the wells. Our souls thirst for you, O oh God. God. We, we lift, lift up our hands and call on your name. Come without money, come without cost. Incline your ears and listen for good news. Our, our flesh, flesh faints for you, you O God. God. Our, our lips, lips sing, sing praises, beholding, beholding your glory. Come, eat good. Come, feast upon true riches. Be filled with that which sustains you. Our, our souls are satisfied in you, O God. God. In, in the, the shadow of, of your wings, we sing with joy. Now please join in singing the gathering song, Come to the Water. Steve. 
join in the prayer of invitation. Author of Abundance, God of Change, we come into this hour with holy expectations. As we travel on our journey of transformation this Lenten season, we know that you are with us. You walk beside us, your presence surrounds us. Help us to bear fruit as we walk this road. Remember us that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that your rod and your staff comfort us, that you have prepared a feast for us when all can come and eat. Keep us forever in the path as we worship you in spirit and truth. Amen. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. God, you call us to step more deeply into ourselves as we amend and awaken to who you desire us to be. Let us acknowledge our transgressions in stillness and in silence so that we may prepare our hearts for change. And may we now speak our confessions together. We confess that we have not always brought forth good fruit. In the midst of chaos and frenzy, we have often lost our way. Our feet have strayed from the place where we met you. Our egos have kept us from seeing our missteps. Yet with you, we know there's another chance for change. There is another opportunity to bear good fruit in a world full of spoiled and rotten produce and systems designed to kill. We are called to be the change that sustains generations. Let us lean with you into this chance for transformation. God's grace and mercy abounds. God is with us in the change. God's everlasting arms embrace us. Each of us is beloved, affirmed, and set free. Amen. Uh, is there any joys or celebrations to share this morning? All right, can you turn Dan on? Even though I'm not a Pewaukee native, I think we should be very happy that the Pewaukee High School girls and boys basketball team both won the state championship. All right, woohoo, Pewaukee girls and boys. Awesome. Hold on, can you turn on Mary? Henry was selected um, from his school. They get six kids, six fourth graders, to compete in a math competition. The math competition is 24. It's a game where you have to, you have four numbers and you have to get to the sum of 24. Um, and he was selected as one of the six to compete in the competition. Awesome, congrats. Henry, was that Henry you said? Yeah. Henry, awesome, congrats. <laughs> You're welcome. Are you a little nervous? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we will definitely pray for your nerves. How about that? Okay, <laughs> any other joys to share this morning? 
Lisa's pointing. Oh, okay. Christopher Hill was on TV for what? Mercer Yukon women's basketball game. Awesome, awesome. He was on TV. Awesome, great. Congrats. Fred. Really? Okay. Becky was promoted to the Associate Director of Stewardship and Compliance at the University of Colorado. <laughs> I have to repeat this because the people online, if I don't repeat it, cannot hear what they're saying. <laughs> Say it in the microphone for me, Linda. That was a lot. <laughs> She was promoted to Associate Director for the University of Colorado Boulder for um, Stewardship and Compliance. Nice. Congratulations, yeah. Becky. Any other joys? Debbie. Wow, Anne and Graham are coming to visit. Woo-hoo. Safe they're in the car. They're going to be here today from St. Louis. Wonderful. Any other joys? All right, looks like we have an uh, anniversary today. Amy and Tim Richardson. Any other anniversaries? All right, let's move on to. Oh, yes, Audrey. Carla and who? Kevin, there, how many years? Your daughter? 40 years. Wow, that's amazing. All right, any birthdays? We have Ashley R., Dorothy E., Megan E., Keith T., Carol N., Maureen G., Alfred G., Marilyn H., and Nikki M. Is anyone here? Megan's here. Megan, Megan, happy birthday. Other birthdays? Any birthdays online or anniversaries online? Sue Young. Daughter-in-law Sarah tomorrow. Happy birthday, Sarah. Any online, Rick? None online that I see. All right, well, uh, we're gonna sing. We're gonna sing to Megan. What a glad day, today's your birthday, our loving greetings we say. What a glad day, today's your birthday, may God's blessings upon you stay. We are friends joined. upon you stay may God's blessings upon you stay wish you many many more birthdays all right now it is time for a child and all of us if you want to come up front remember your hands yes thank you Do we have any online, Rick? Good morning. Did you do, oh, did you do two things today? You got hands and what's the other thing? Did you think to pray? Can I see it? All right, that's cool. It says, did you think to pray? 
And then the other thing they did, can I see that? Is they did hands today, praying hands. Sorry, I'm trying to get in the camera angle. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna talk about prayer today. Can I hold yours, Emma, is it okay? Okay. So what did you learn about prayer in Lent? Do you remember? During Lent, we should pray more, what? Mealtime and bedtime, yep. And we should pray more often in Lent, right? Because Lent is a time that we connect with God, we turn back to God, so we pray. What is prayer? Do you know? There's one way that we are, you, did you say you do? You know what prayer is? Yes, I'm glad you know. One way to communicate with God is through prayer, right? Kind of like picking up the telephone. God, it's me, Julie, coming to talk to you today. No? I'm getting the weird looks. <laughs> so, I like this. It says, my prayer for Lent on the inside. And see, then it helps you write the prayer. It says, dear Jesus, kind of like, hello, Jesus. And then it says, love always. And then you wrote, can I say what you wrote? Okay. You wrote, thank you for Oscar and Elena. Is that your friend? So you wrote a prayer of thanks. That's awesome. There's all kinds of ways that we can talk to God and um, one of the ways is definitely to be thankful. Another way, do we have a friend? Okay. Um, where was I? Oh, so today we're gonna, what, do you know the prayer right before we did birthdays and stuff? The prayer where there's a lot of silence. Do you know what that kind of prayer is called? A prayer of meditation. Close. Medi not meditation, but close. Confession. Prayer of confession. And that's all the times where we say all the things we didn't do this week that we probably should have done, right? So today, Jesus, in the story, he calls us, this is a really big word, he calls us to repentance. Do you know what repentance means? No. <laughs> so today, Jesus tells us we have to change our ways. We have to do better. So one of the ways that we can do that first is by praying the things that we didn't do and confess. And now we're gonna do our energy and put in the effort to do the things we should do. So one of the ways we can do that is when we pray to admit the things we forgot to do and to ask God for help to do the things we should. So practice of Lent is extra prayers during this time as we prepare, as we head closer and closer to Holy Week. So, I like what you wrote, Emma. Very good prayer. Anybody else want to share what they wrote for their prayers? Henry. I did a prayer for my friends and the Ukraine people. For your friends and for the Ukraine people? That's a great prayer. Anybody else want to share? Okay, can you help me pray? All right. Dear God, thank you for Jesus and this time of Lent. Help us to prepare by recognizing the ways we don't always do what we need to. Help us to move forward and doing all that you call us to do. 
Amen. Thank you so much. I'm glad you have made your prayer hands today. The scripture today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. On the same occasion, there were people present who told Jesus about some Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their own sacrifices. Jesus replied, Do you think these Galileans were the greatest sinners in Galilee just because they suffered this? Not at all. I tell you, You'll all come to the same end unless you change your ways. Or take those 18 who were killed by a falling tower in Siloam. Do you think they were more guilty than anyone else who has lived in Jerusalem? Certainly not. I tell you, you'll all come to the same end unless you change your ways. Jesus told this parable. There was a fig tree growing in a vineyard. The owner came out looking for fruit on it, but didn't find any. The owner said to the vine dresser, Look here, for three years now I've come out in search of fruit on this fig tree and have found none. Cut it down. Why should it clutter up the ground? In reply, the vine dresser said, Please leave it one more year while I hoe around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then let it be cut down. This is the word of the still speaking God. Today, may we contemplate the mercy of our divine in our daily lives and take hold of the Spirit's transforming power. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come seeking the direction you expect us to follow. May we drop our own expectations and hear your words guiding us this day. And may the meditation of our hearts and the words upon my lips be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How many of you are familiar with the tennis legend, Billie Jean King? All right, most of you are. Okay, so what would you say is the one thing she's most remembered for? Playing Bobby Riggs, okay. Remember that, the battle of the sexes? She beat Bobby Riggs, that's right, yes. <laughs> yes, we have to clarify, correct. Do you, any other thoughts, or do you think that's the most famous thing? All right, well, we'll agree. I don't hear any other counterpoints. All right, so how many of you are aware that she is attributed to this following quote? I think self-awareness is probably the most important thing towards being a champion. You ever heard that being attributed to her? No. No? Oh. Okay. So, how many, though, if, would you agree with her that self-awareness is the most important thing towards being a champion? You would agree? Okay. A couple people agree. Have you ever thought about self-awareness before? I see some heads shaking. Yeah. <laughs> Linda's definitely in agreement. Okay. All right. So, well, for today, I'm going to tweak her qu quote a little bit, and I'm going to say that self-awareness is one of the most important things in Christian discernment. So, as you know, we've been journeying through Lent with the book, Discernment, God's Will, and Living Jesus, Christian Discernment as a Way of Life. The author, Larry Warner, talks about self-awareness in his t chapter titled, Be Aware. Not beware, but be aware. 
Being aware invites attentiveness to what is. So in his chapter, Warner even includes a quote from Elizabeth Browning. She says, Earth's crammed with heaven, and every common bush afire with God. But only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit around and pick blueberries. There's a lot of talk and concern about self-awareness, but do we stop and consider how one becomes self-aware? So, Warner suggests the three S's. Are you ready? The first S, slowing. The second S, solitude. The third S, silence. Slowing, solitude, and silence. Let's start with the first S, slowing. So, slowing down seems simple enough, right? But it's actually harder to do. We get caught up in our fast pace of life and business. Adjusting to a different pace actually takes intentional work. Have you ever gotten home from vacation and feel like you need a vacation from your vacation? Yes, exactly. So, these... Uh, experiences that we have, we think we're taking rest, right? We're gonna go to Disney World and we're gonna spend like this day and this day and this day and then you come home and you're like, I'm exhausted, right? Our weekends and our vacation times, we just fill them up, cram them up with things to do so we don't actually rest. So some suggestions that Warner gives about slowing down are, you could start by practicing to walk slower you could take longer time to brush your teeth. Um, you could start slowing down your morning routine. Make it a little slower pace, so that will help throughout the rest of the day. Because when we slow down, it creates more possibility of connecting with God throughout the day. So one example, I'm sure many of you have experienced this in church many times. Be still and know that I am God. You've heard that several times, right? Be still and know that I am God. Okay, solitude. Solitude is certainly a practice that Jesus exemplifies repeatedly throughout scripture where he slips away to be alone. I've said that several times. Warner describes this activity as first starting as an external practice by physically spending time alone. But it can then develop into an internalized practice where you and God can be alone even if you are in a room of other people. Warner writes, quote, in solitude we are who we are in Christ, nothing more, but more importantly, nothing less. Alone with God, we can begin to own who we truly are, end quote. Silence. So silence creates space for active listening. If God is still speaking, then we should be actively listening. And that means we have to actually take action to listen. Solitude and silence go together to create a powerful experience when communicating with God. So Warner shares that once you've practiced these three S's, you will begin to develop what he calls heart awareness. When you are aware of your heart, you are able to align your heart with God's heart. Now heart alignment then brings us closer to discerning and embodying God's will. So this concept of heart awareness leads us to a key question. Quote, which direction is my life, emotions, circumstances, interactions, thoughts, etc., taking me toward God or away from God? End quote. The gospel lesson for today is an example of Jesus' own Galileans lacking self-awareness. 
They were speaking to Jesus in self-righteous anger, and Jesus refused to join in with them and their contempt, and instead points out their lack of self-awareness. He says, do you think these Galileans were the greatest sinners in Galilee just because they suffered this? Not at all. I tell you, you all come to the same end unless you change your ways. So first, Jesus points out their lack of self-awareness, and then he calls them to repentance. In our first egalitarian inclusive version, Jesus says, unless you change your ways. In the NRSV version, it says, but unless you repent. So after Jesus calls for the repentance, he shares a parable. And the parable of the fig tree tells a story of self-awareness, repentance, and moving back toward God. So if the tree isn't producing any figs, let's discern why there aren't any figs. Are there ever going to be any figs? Most likely not if nothing changes, if we don't change our ways. So then the vine dresser then offered to make some adjustments. But the vine vineyard owner only gave one year with the new adjustments before removing the tree. So removing something from one's life that is not fruitful is absolutely necessary in the process of repentance. What behaviors do I need to stop or change if I'm going to repent of my wrongdoing? Cutting down the fig tree in the verbiage of discernment is called shedding. Danny Morris and Charles Olson define shedding in discerning God's will together, a spiritual practice for the church, as, quote, naming and laying aside anything that will deter the person or group from focusing on God's will as the ultimate value, end quote. So when we discern, we often ask ourselves a lot of questions in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Morris and Olson offer a couple of cutting down the fig tree questions, and I want to share them with you. Here they are. Quote, what needs to die in me or in us in order for God's gifts and direction to find room in our lives? The other set of questions, what am I willing to let die to give God room to start something new? What will I lay aside or leave behind so that I will be open to new gifts of grace and new expressions of ministry? End quote. So as exemplified in the Gospel of Luke today, Jesus calls us to repent. But before we can repent, we have to be able to understand what we need to repent. If we are not people of discernment, it is difficult to be aware of what behaviors, emotions, circumstances, interactions, thoughts are taking us away from God. How often do we journey through our lives knowing that the fig tree has no figs, but never stop to seek what part we play in that figless tree? How long will we worry? Will we complain? We blame for the decline of the church without ever recognizing the parts we play in the decline. How often will we shout with self-righteous anger without our own repentance and changing of our own ways? So, if you agree with Billie Jean King that self-awareness is probably the most important thing towards being a champion, I challenge you to be aware and enter into the practice of discernment. Find a place to be in solitude and silence and with the presence of the Holy Spirit and ask yourselves the questions. Which direction is my life 
emotions, circumstances, interactions, thoughts, etc., taking me toward God or away from God? What needs to die in me, in us, in order for God's gifts and directions to find room in our lives? What am I willing to let die to give God room to start something new? What will I lay aside or leave behind so that I will be open to new gifts of God's grace or new expressions of ministry? So today, uh, Jesus is calling us to change our ways. So let's change our ways and become people of discernment and begin the practice of discernment in repentance. Amen. Please join in singing our song of reflection, Just As I Am. Our prayer person for the week is Jean Hinsey, and you will find her contact information in your bulletin, or it'll be in this week's uh, Redeemer Reminders. And if you also have the app on your phone, you can look up that information there. Prayer requests today that have been submitted from Patty. She's asking for prayers for Uncle Fred, who is in rehab, recovering from septic shock, and he's 82 years old. 
Dave Swan is praying for his surgery this Wednesday, which is the 23rd, and he's having carotid surgery. So please, please pray for Dave. Michelle and Bob Rocky are praying for Lindsay, who is going through testing because of a possible return of cancer. Kathleen Schaber is asking for prayers for her uncle, Al Stuvey, currently in the hospital. He will move into rehab for severe back and leg pain. And then Don Easterling is thanking and praising uh, with prayer for all the cards and thoughts. He's continuing to heal and thinking positively. Yeah, yeah, that's it. May we now enter a time of prayer and meditation. God of the living, through baptism we pass from the shadow of death to the light of the resurrection. Remain with us and give us hope rejoicing in the gift of the Spirit. This day we rejoice for Jean Hinsey and the many ways she supports the church. May she be surrounded by the strength and love of Christ and may the practice of discernment build her relationship with God. We give thanks and rejoice for the people who have gathered to discuss the Christian practice of discernment and following the will of God. We rejoice for the sun shining, the birds chirping, the warm breeze, and the promise of warmer weather and sprouts of new life. We give thanks and rejoice for the healing of Don. Faithful God of love, you blessed us with your servant son so that we might know how to serve your people with justice and with mercy. We gather the needs of ourselves and others and offer them to you in faith and love, seeking to be strengthened to meet them. Through the process of discernment, make clear the changes in our ways that need to be made, the new paths we should follow, the acts of justice we should take, the ministries we should fulfill, and the ways we should repent. We call out to you again for peace in Ukraine, we lift up all those that hold political power around the world. May they all work together for justice and for peace for all people. May their actions be your will and their hearts connected with yours. This day we lift up all those who are traveling for spring break. May they be safe and protected as well as renewed and refreshed. We lift up all those that are struggling with their physical health. Dave. Fred, Lindsay, Al. May your healing power surround them. May those that are their medical providers discern your wisdom and will. May their loved ones find strength, peace, and support in your presence. May those that are grieving this day find the strength and peace of Christ within them. God of infinite goodness, throughout the ages you have pers persevered in claiming and reclaiming your people. Renew to us your call to repentance. Surround us with witnesses to aid us in our journey and grant us the time to fashion our lives anew. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, whose prayer we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
and now responding as God's people. As recipients of the generosity of God, let us share our generosity with each other and with our communities. Today we want to express gratitude and thank you to Austin Eklund for volunteering as a valet liturgist and Zoom coordinator. We appreciate you and your willingness to serve the church. Thank you, Austin. And then also the gold can today. Our mission is to meet the immediate and long-term needs of individuals and families in our area by providing food, informational resources, client advocacy, and general assistance. Because of the current economic conditions, the number of families needing assistance is growing. The food pantries are currently struggling to serve the number of families in leave, in need rather. So let us be generous in our contributions for the food pantries of Sussex and Pewaukee. And then in gratitude for your generosity, Redeemer, we want to give thanks for the joy that our life in Christ brings and for the hope and the joy that you give to others when you participate and when you share your gifts of generosity, time, and talents. Every small action is significant, and we want you to know that you are noticed and appreciated. And so for today's offering today, you may leave your offerings in the back of the sanctuary as you leave online or on our website or mail them into the church. And many thanks for your generosity. So now please join in singing our departing song, God of grace and God of glory.
go forth in discernment, slowing, solitude, silence, searching for that heart, connect, heart connectedness with God. Go forth and change your ways. Amen. Thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Rick. Thank you everyone online. Dan, Mary, John, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great week.